Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1305. Hey, if you want to download this Excel workbook, 1303 to 1306 and follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, in this video, we got to talk about how to get the index function to deliver an array of items using this amazing formula element, the end function, the if function, one and an array. Now, last video, 1304, we saw this trick for the first time. And here's a blog that talks all about this formula element and how it allows us to get functions to return multiple items that don't usually return multiple items. Now, last video, we saw the index function with the text join function to deliver multiple items to the cell. But in this video, we actually just want to, from this data set, look up three different sets of criteria, get one, two, three values and add them in a single cell. If I change any one of the criteria here, so I'm going to change the product to Carlota instantly, I want want one, two, three different cells. Now I'm going to Control Z. Now we could simply use two-way lookup. Because a two-way lookup, we say, hey, Bellin, find it here. It would find row number two. And then the month, it would find the month as the first column. And the intersecting value would be one of our values. So we could actually just use index and match. Now index and match together are famous for doing two-way lookup. Well, we could use this formula element on the first set of criteria. Then we could use the second set of match and index to get Carlota in April, and then the third one to get Quad in May. And that would work. But what if you had many different sets of criteria? This formula would get huge. Now, this actual video relates to Excel Magic Trick 1071, and I actually put it here for you to look. This video is similar. We were actually trying to look up a certain set of numbers in a data set that were all next to each other, and there was all sorts of amazing versions. So you can go watch that video if you want. Here we just simply want to keep it simple and add these three cells. Well, we're going to use index, and I'm going to highlight the entire two-way lookup array, comma. And what I'm going to try first off is for row number, I'm going to give all three of these products to the match functions and see if match will deliver, in essence, an array of two, three, and 5, which would be the row number. So in row number, I'm going to type match. Lookup value, we're going to do a function argument array operation. I'm going to highlight all three of those. Anytime we do that, that means match is going to spit out three answers, comma. Lookup array, those are all of the row headers in our two-way lookup data set, comma, 0, because they're not sorted, close parentheses. Now let's just look at what match will deliver. Of course, it's going to deliver three items, F9. There they are, 2, 3, and 5, just as we would need for the three rows, Control-Z. Now I'm going to continue my logic here. For column, I'm going to try and get from these items here the column numbers which represent January, April, and May. So I use match. Lookup, hey, I'm going to give it a function argument array operation, comma, lookup array. There they are, comma, zero, close parentheses. Now if I click on column number, highlight, and hit F9, 1, 4, and 5. 1, 4, and 5. So this should work if I close parentheses and highlight this in F9. Oh, I get a value. Yes, that is a well-known problem for index. Index has a hard time delivering multiple items. But as we saw in last video and in this blog, we're going to dump this whole thing into the construction, n, if, 1. And then this is our array. So you ready? n function, tab. if function, tab. And then logical test, you can put any non-zero number or true. I'm going to put 1. And then there's the value of true. I'm simply going to come to the end, close parentheses, and then for value and I'm going to close parentheses. And now if I look at this row number in F9, it doesn't look any different, but index will treat it different. Control-Z, 
And like I said in the last video, I don't really know why n, if, and this. When we do this construction, it works like this. But if anyone knows, please post below. Now I'm going to cheat. Watch this. I'm going to copy all this Control C. And then right before this match, Control V. And then come after match, close parentheses, close parentheses. And sure enough, here is some mysterious Excel magic. When I hit F9, there are the three numbers. And this is dynamic. If we change this criteria, this will update. Control Z. Now, I would like to add these. And I know this is a bunch of array calculations. So I'm going to try and put it in some product. Some product array argument handles array operations without Control Shift Enter, except sometimes, like with the if function. And in this case, I think it's the match there or something. But so it's not working with just Enter. Now, I could use some product and use Control Shift Enter, but that leaves this formula a little ambiguous, since most people know that some product usually can handle array operations without Control-Shift-Enter. I'm not going to leave it here. I'm going to put this inside of sum, because my goal is to add those numbers. Now, when I see this, I'm assuming Control-Shift and Enter. That's the keyboard shortcut to get this array formula to work. I look up to the formula bar. I see my curly brackets, which is Excel telling me it understood and calculated it correctly. Now if I come up here and type Carlota and Enter, sure enough, both formulas are working correctly. Control-Z, F2. Well, hey, does that look shorter? That looks shorter, and it might be easier. That's longer. But in some cases, I definitely would prefer this one, especially when there's many criteria spanning down more rows than this. All right, uh, thanks to Excelarium for originally posting this blog and these, this amazing blog. And if you go look at this website, it is amazing for array formulas. All right, we'll see you next video.